Welcome to another Rebots episode. In this video, we will talk about Kookaburr Proxy, an open show bar. This open source tool allows us to connect to the robot and view global variables. Let's thank IMTS for its magnificent tool and let's dive into the installation and configuration. You can find Kookaburr Proxy in GitHub. You can also find this tool in RoboDK. They use this tool to share some variables to connect with their simulation software. Anyway, let's go back to installation. You will need this executable. So first of all, let's download the repository. After downloading it, we will need to decompress the package. Now that we have the software, we need to transfer it to the controller. We can do this via USB. For me, I have a shared folder, so I will connect with the controller via remote desktop and copy the executable file in the shared folder. If you want to know how I can connect via remote desktop, or share a folder, watch our previous video. I will leave a link in the description below. I use Ultra VNC Viewer, as you can see. Here I'm connecting to the remote desktop, which is the SmartPad. Now I'm connected to the SmartPad. You will need to change user group to minimize the HMI and go into the Windows. If you haven't done this before, just follow the steps. The password is KUKA by default. The share folder is in the departition. I called it remote sharing. As you can see, I can simply copy and paste into the folder and it will be shared with the controller. To view it in the controller, you just need to refresh the folder. So I click on remote sharing again and you can see the folder Kukavar Proxy Master. Now we go to startup service and minimize the HMI. Now we are in Windows. So we go into computer, departition, remote sharing, and we go into Kukavar Proxy source. And in source, we just simply need to execute the file, which will open the server. If you turn off the computer, the server will turn off. So what you will need to do is put a shortcut into the startup folder. Any application that you put in this folder will run on startup, even if you reboot the controller. So here's the procedure how to do it. You go into start, right click on startup folder and click on explore. This will open the folder. And now you just need to create a shortcut and copy that shortcut into the other folder. As you can see, I have a previous version already, so I will delete this shortcut. The thing is, I already know that the previous version works perfectly well, so I don't need to change it. If you wanted to update the program, you just need to do this procedure again. And instead of deleting the new shortcut, just delete the old one. Now back to the controller. We know this is a server. But how does it communicate with the outside? We will need to open a port for that. It's quite well documented in GitHub. So you see the port is 7000. We go into network configuration and advanced. Then we go to NAT and we add a port. The port will be 7000 and we select TCP UDP. Now, after saving this configuration or any type of network configuration, the controller will ask you to reboot and reload the files. So we will need to go into the shutdown menu and select reload files and reboot the control. We'll wait for it to restart and we'll try the new server. Now that the controller has started, we can double check that our server has started. So we go into the user group and change into administrator to minimize the HMI again. So as we can see, Kukovar proxy is running and we can test it with open show bar. If we run this client, we will be able to access global variables. This client accesses uh, the variable list that you have selected. In this list, I've already declared some variables. As you can see, we can see the current position, which is access act. If we go into display, actual position and access is specific, we can double check that it's correct. This is in real time. On the top bar, you can see the refresh time, which is a thousand milliseconds. As I said before, these variables are declared in a list. The list is called var list, and it's an XML file. It's pretty simple. You have a name and an IP address. You can copy more variables here or add them in the actual client. Let me show you if I delete all these variables, we will only have uh, four left. So now if I open the program, 
in the client we will see only four variables kind of like mqtt you can clear the list and import the var list again by default the var list is empty as shown i've imported again the variables but you need to close the program to check on the variables again so i will delete this list again and i will add my own list as you can see you can have many variable lists and you can have multiple sets or different robots in the same list you can also change the value of the variable even though i don't do it in this video this client is the most basic one with a ui it's basically to monitor but if you're more into programming you can use other types of connectors this server reminds me a bit of iot with mqtt and subscribers and opc ua let's take a look to the other clients in the main repository in github they also recommend you JOpen Showbar in related repositories. This is a Java connector. I will show a small demo on how to connect this Java connector later on in this video. But this is not the only connector. If you're more familiar with Python programming, there's also a Python connector. I will show you right now. If you go into Google and type PyOpenShowbar, you will find the official website with all the documentation. Well, it's pretty simple, so there's not much to read, but you will see how to install. You basically need the pip install pyopenshowbar. So let's open my most trusted programming IDE, Microsoft Visual Studio Code, and paste in the terminal the command. Here I got a warning message. I wasn't very sure what was the problem. Then I later, I realized it was just that my version of pip was a bit old and I just needed it to update, but it had nothing to do with a Python client. So after installing the Python client, I tried it by copying the example. Even though the example is used in the shell, that's why I had to refactor the bigger than signs. So let me clear the code a bit and write the script. Okay, delete the return values and just the bigger than signs. Here we go. And after that, we can check if the script is working. So we execute it. Running this script will give us the speed in automatic. As you can see, the variable is ovpro, overwrite programming speed. Oh, and don't forget to change the IP and the port, unlike me. <laughs> so here I was sitting wondering why it wasn't working because it's a very simple script and it's just a few lines. And then I realized, oh my God, the IP address and the port are wrong. So. Let me change that. And now that the values are correct, uh, we'll run it again. The return value should be 100, as you can see in our smart pad. And we get 100, which is correct. Now let's try it with the actual positions, just to see if this is just a fluke. No, it's not a fluke. It's correct. It's working. So let's go to the next connector. Now, if you download a JOpen Showbar, you just need to open the folder that says JOpen Showbar Core. Now, we will see two test examples. But first of all, let me change the IP address. This one is not necessary, but just in case, I have a nightmare, so I changed that by mistake, and now I changed this one. Now, if we run this, it should work already. This simple program changes the automatic speed and manual speed. Let's focus on the automatic speed on the variable override program. As you can see, I will change it from 100 to 10. We can also check on the client open show bar. And all three of them should tell us that the program speed is 10. So that is correct. Everything works. And that's it for today. I hope you guys liked this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video, where we will set up OpenShowbar with RoboDK.